The house was built sometime between 1754 and 1765. It was built to be the Iron Master's Mansion, basically the corporate headquarters for Oxford Furnace. And Oxford Furnace was built sometime between 1741 and 1743 by Dr. William Shipman of Philadelphia. He was a very prominent physician, a self-taught physician. He was also an investor, and he knew nothing about iron making. Here in this portion of New Jersey, and we, at, the, at that time, were on the Philadelphia frontier. Philadelphia is like, it's like the Hollywood of the 13 colonies. All the important people are there, all the thinkers. And so, Dr. Shipman is part of this crowd, and uh, this is a crowd that wants to increase its wealth, and uh, they're looking north, east and west uh, for investments and this part of New Jersey had the three ingredients that were perfect for iron making. There's iron in the ground, obviously you need that, but there was also a lot of limestone and you sort of use the limestone once you've cooked it as kind of a, a flux to help liberate the iron from the ore and they had hundreds, thousands of acres of hardwood and that makes very good charcoal. So you're going to use that as your fuel. So Dr. Shippen with a partner built the furnace in the early 1740s. And in the 1750s, 1760s, they were making enough money that they wanted to make it headquarters. At least Dr. Shippen did. Apparently his partner wasn't interested. And Dr. Shippen had a son, Joseph, um, for whom he built the house. Actually, Joseph was going to be the iron master. And he knew nothing more about making iron than Dr. Shippen. But, um, Joseph was sent here in 1766, and he came here with a retinue of servants and slaves, and he was the iron master. Basically, he didn't have to know anything about iron making. His job was to keep the books and keep the operation running, make sure everybody got paid. There was a small trading post, a small store down here at the intersection also that he had to run, and it was visited by Indians trading furs and local settlers. Um, pretty successful business, actually. And between the two operations, Joseph was very comfortable. This side of the Shippen family supported the Patriot cause. Dr. Shippen went on to be a delegate to the uh, Continental Congress. And the local legend is, although we can't completely prove it, but this is where one of the places where um, cannonballs were made for uh, Washington's army. Uh, subsequent to the Shippens, there was a family here named Robert Dell. Um, Major Robert Dell helped Pierre Lafont lay out the city of Washington. He later went on to become chief of the uh, U.S. topographical engineers in the Army. Um, after that, we had a family here named Robeson, who coincidentally, uh, Mr. Robeson was, I think, the grandson or great grandson of Dr. Shippen's first partner. Mr. Robeson didn't do anything of note, but it's thought that his grandson was born here. And his name was George Maxwell Robeson, and he was Secretary of the Navy under uh, President Grant, also a general in the Civil War. After the Robesons get the Henrys, and this is very significant to industrial history, in that William Henry comes here to Oxford, he wants to, he wants to buy a furnace, an old furnace, cheap, because he plans to pioneer a new method of iron making hot blast. It's going to be the first time it's used in this country and uh, it revolutionizes iron making and steel making later on. That's done right here at Oxford Furnace. And um, while Henry is here, his son is born in the house, his son Joseph in 1835. And Joseph has the dubious uh, distinction of being the first New Jersey officer killed in the Civil War. The Henry's hire, or William Henry hires, couple of brothers out of uh, Belvedere, they're clerking in the store, they're actually from Connecticut originally, but they're working in Belvedere, and he sends these two brothers up to northeastern Pennsylvania, a place called Slocum Hollow. He wants them to buy up all of the ground they can, all the real estate they can, where they think there's coal under the ground, because he, Henry's running out of charcoal, it's not an efficient way of, of making uh, iron. These two brothers go up to Slocum Hollow, they buy up all this land, and they start mining coal. Slocum Hollow is now known as Scranton because the Scranton brothers went there and started the coal industry. The Scrantons end up marrying into the Henry family, so the Scrantons actually end up living here for a while and owning the house. In the early 1900s, the Iron Company, it was actually Empire Iron and Steel, which was a uh, subsidiary, to use a more modern term, of U.S. Steel. They uh, decide to make this into the Iron Superintendent's residence, and once they've, they didn't restore it, but they rehabilitated it, um, they hire a superintendent named Dr. Sterling Galt Valentine. 
Dr. Valentine is from both Reading and Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, metallurgist. Comes here with his family. He's a very productive member of the community. He's a very efficient superintendent. He has a cousin in Washington, D.C. who's a jeweler, Mormon Gold. Mormon actually dies fairly early in the story, but um, Norman's widow, who's sort of a cousin-in-law, very fond of Dr. Sterling Valentine and his wife Adele, and she writes to them from Washington, D.C. She's a very pretty, very socially active uh, lady. They write back and forth. And at one point, uh, this, this woman, Edith was her name, goes to a party and she meets a guy named Woodrow who has a really good job. And she becomes Edith Bowling Gold Wilson. And I have held in my hand the letters to Mrs. Adele Valentine, Ship and Manor, actually it says Ship and Manor on the envelope, Oxford, New Jersey, with the return address of the White House. It certainly has been recognized as a landmark since the middle 19th century. Sometime in the late 20s, early 30s, then it went into private hands. The state acquired it, I want to say around 1969, 1970, but the state didn't do anything with it. And there was a lot of pressure from Warren County people to uh, have Warren County acquire it, which they did around 1985, let's say. And uh, the restoration efforts began uh, shortly thereafter and continue even 25 years later.